What are you playing at? Are you even there? Do you ever catch yourself saying these words? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Are these not some of the saddest words in the Bible? Jesus has had a full relationship with his heavenly father. And now at the moment, he needs him more than at any other time. At the moment of his death, we hear the words that should pierce the heart of any believer. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? What on earth is going on? Is Jesus really being abandoned by the one in whom he has had full trust? Is our heavenly father really going to abandon his beloved son now as he is hanging on the cross? What hope? Does that give to us if the answer is yes? Or is it that Jesus just feels abandoned? You know, like sometimes we do when someone doesn't turn up when needed. The, the news at the moment is full of evil over good. The beautiful young woman with her whole life ahead of her is murdered. The children playing in the streets are not safe from the predator. Women and young girls, they are used in the sex industry. Men that are offered a lifetime of hope in the land of plenty are used in the slave industry. Where is God? Where is God in all this suffering? The burning pain, wounds lashed so deeply that they alone could have killed. Thorns rammed into the already beaten, broken flesh. Nails crunching into bone. My God, my God, Jesus cries. The image of utter isolation and fear but fear of what searing pain well that would be me the ridicule that would be me the humiliation again that would lead me to fear he claimed to be the son of God. Well, he doesn't look much like the son of God now, does he? Hanging, naked, beaten, crushed. What has this man done to deserve the vilest, cruelest form of execution. Why is Jesus just hanging on a cross? Get yourself down if you are the son of God. For all eternity, Jesus has enjoyed the full fellowship with his father. Not for one nanosecond have they been separated. Yet here we hear these words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you not with me? 
Why can I not feel your presence? Are you there? Jesus, he must hang on that cross. He must hang on that cross with faith. Jesus doesn't have to believe in God. No, in this moment of crisis, he must believe God. Even when the suffering seems too much to bear, Jesus must cling to what he knows to be true, that God is always good. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Has the father abandoned his son? The honest truth? Yes, he has to, doesn't he? As we gaze on the horrific scene of the cross, surely we gaze at the gospel message. Jesus will do something amazing. He will do something utterly astounding. The pure, sin-free Jesus will become sin. He and the Father will be separated by sin. And God, God, he cannot look at his son. So he turns his face away. Because Jesus has become filthy. So tarred by sin that he stinks. He reeks with the stench of my sin, your sin. Every sin that has ever been or ever will be is now poured out on Jesus. God has let loose his wrath, his anger up on his son and now hanging on the cross we see the full demonstration of the hatred that God has for sin and Jesus Jesus cries out in sorrow I watched a interview of the very brave parents of a man who had been found guilty for the murder of several women. The interviewer asked, how do you feel about your son? We love him, but the crime, it's too hard for us to bear. We can't visit him because we can't look him in the face. We don't recognize him as the son that we know and love. Sin must be punished. Here in front of the father is the son hanging on the cross, drenched in sin and sin must be punished. Even when the circumstances suggest that God is not good, Jesus cries out in faith, my God, my God. He knew that what he had to face on the cross was a far greater challenge than what he had faced in the wilderness, where he was brought to near death. The wrath of God is far greater 
than the fury of Satan. There is never a moment when Jesus is not fully aware that he would have to face the full wrath of the Father. The events of the cross come as no surprise to Jesus. He knew what the outcome of his 33 years would be. The brutality, the ridicule, the spite, jealousy and hatred being dumped by those he called friends. No surprise. You know, I was going to write down some of the things that I know are my sins. But I was even too ashamed to write them down for my viewing. The words I speak. The, the sorts of TV programmes I watch. The jokes that I laugh at. The sins that play their part to Jesus crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do you catch yourself questioning God? Where are you, Lord? Why the suffering, the children in the third world? Cancer, dementia, death. Why, Lord? Jesus has this moment in time where in his suffering, in his hour of need, his fellowship from God is momentarily separated. Is Jesus questioning God? No, Jesus is far from questioning God. Jesus is relying on his heavenly father to keep his promise. The promise that he will punish the one who has become sin. Part of Jesus's suffering was that he would be separated from the father. He is abandoned so that we who believe in the one who becomes sin may never be separated from God. Jesus's love for the Father is met by darkness and judgment. There's going to be no pardon as a criminal on death row would hope for, hope for. The father has poured every sin on him and Jesus is going to willingly suffer the consequences. It is the father's will that Jesus, his son, will be crushed. And not for one moment does Jesus question God. But he cried out in faith, my God, my God. He accepted the wrath that was let loose on him. He was drinking the cup of God's fury. Jesus cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The anger shown towards Jesus shows the mercy that God has towards his people. Jesus cries out, these words so that we may never cry out the words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
our salvation, our eternal life depends solely on the sinless life of Jesus and his willingness to go to the cross, to become sinful and accept God's anger. He not only voluntarily accepted the humiliation of the cross, but he joyfully accepted the humiliation of the cross because he knew fully that his death, our last enemy, death, will be defeated. Jesus is fully aware that he must endure the full wrath of God. He is fully aware that he must endure this suffering. He felt abandoned because he was abandoned in fulfillment of the scriptures. He who knew no sin became sin on the cross, all in accordance with God's eternal plan. Jesus was separated from God's love, his kindness, his peace, his joy, and accepted his punishment and fury all out of the love that he has for his people. God, out of mercy and love, did not spare his son so that we might be spared. Sean said something last week that has been on my mind throughout my preparation for this evening. The cross, so wrong, yet so wonderful. Will this be the Easter where we gaze afresh at the cross? Will we look at its brutality, the killing of God's only son? And with our same eyes, will we look at its beauty? For those who believe in the Son, we are freed from death by the one who willingly, joyfully chose to die. Amen. <laughs>